Welcome back to the Cheap Heat Productions podcast. Okay, today on the show, I am joined by a man that you've probably seen uh, <clears throat> a lot on your TV screens recently with the two West Cork documentaries that aired on Sky and Netflix. He's joined me today to talk about a few things. Mr. Ian Bailey, how are you doing today, sir? Um, Tommy, Tommy, come on, Connor Star 2. Uh, I'm, I'm good, thank you. Very good, very good. <clears throat> uh, listen, how has things been since all this hype and media and... Has it dragged up old bad memories or how has it been in general around for you? Well, um, I think it's, it's five, five or six weeks ago now, the documentary, first documentary, The Jim Doc came out on Sky and then the Netflix piece of propaganda came out, I think the week after. And I, I've almost lost track of days and time and week at the moment because it's been like a... It's been like being on a roller coaster. Every day has been like a, a week and every week's been like a month. I've been working 18 hour days from six o'clock till midnight, just dealing with aspects of the fallout of it. Um, yeah, and it's, you know, it's quite uh, astonishing. And it, it, it also coincided with, for some reason, unbeknown to me, I broke my social media virginity there about, around about the time the the, the documentaries came out. It wasn't a sort of deliberate plan. It was just something that happened. And um, it's been like a, a wild, crazy, bonco rocking. It's like I'm tied to the back of a, an out of control, unbroken Mustang Colt that keeps sort of <laughs> trying to throw me off and I'm hanging on and hanging on. What's the what's the reaction been like? I've seen there's a lot of positivity going on and like you're meeting a lot of people from around yeah, the world. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a bit, there's a slight, slight, slight bit of negativity, and there always will be, and there always mm-hmm. would be, and that's you know, with anything as well. Now, I've had a huge amount of support from enormous amounts of people that I, d- I don't know who come up to me, and um, a lot of support online as well. And there's been a um, a, a petition launched online, uh, justice for Sophie and justice for Ian, which is intended for the commissioner of Angola Shirkana, Drew Harris. Yeah who I have been writing to and pressing for, to open a, a cold case review. And I'm, I'm still waiting officially to hear that there will be a cold case review, but I'm hoping there will be. Yeah, and that's that's got over a couple of thousand signatures now, isn't it? It's gaining a bit of momentum at the moment. Yeah, it has. I think it's it was launched by a third party who, who approached me and said she had this idea and did I object? And I said, no, I had no objection to it. And... It's, it's nothing to do with me. It's to do with somebody else who's organized it. And um, I gather it's um, attracting uh, quite a lot of um, signatories. And you, you can people can go. It, it, it's really to establish justice for Sophie and justice for myself. And as you know, and everybody knows, I've been convicted on a pyre of, well, I would say, lies in Paris for a crime I had nothing to do with. Um, the French family and the relatives and the association behind all believe that I'm the murderer. I know I'm not. Um, and I also know that there are people in this country in very high positions who know I have nothing to do with this crime. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it would just be very good for everybody if it could be established, one, it was not Ian Bailey, and two, whether the identity of the murderer could ever be established, I don't know. But I think it would clear the air for a lot of people to know that I had nothing to do with this terrible crime. Have you watched the documentaries back? Now, I watched the two of them, and I watched the Netflix one first. 
And then I watched the Sky one and I found the Sky one to be an awful lot fairer, an awful lot more detailed. And obviously with someone like Jim Sheridan involved as well, it was just better produced and there was more detail involved in it. Well, um, I what what what's happened? Uh, I started to, you know, I cooperated with the Jim Project over five or six years. I think it was something like 700 hours of film footage shot in connection with that. And it was whittled down to, I think, five episodes on Sky. I watched the first two episodes um, there a few weeks ago on a Sunday night. And it made me so, so sad, um, sad for the victim sad for jewels and sad for myself and i um i didn't watch any more i haven't watched any more i might at a point in the future watch the entire jim doc now on the, with the netflix doc i knew that they were coming out and i also knew that their their um offering was never going to be an objective piece of documentary making it was always going to be a biased demonizing piece of self-serving propaganda um, and I said as such before it came out, and <clears throat> I wasn't proved wrong by it. I haven't seen it. I won't be watching it. My lawyers are looking at it, and a particular aspect of it uh, that involves a long black coat, which I once used to possess, which mm -hmm. features quite um, prominently in the Netflix documentary, and the suggestion is that it was probably the coat that I, w I wore when I committed the crime, which I had nothing to do with, and that I destroyed that coat in a fire. And yet, it's quite clear that on the Christmas Day swim in 1996 in Skull, I'm seen and filmed, and I'm wearing a long black coat. And yet, the chief detective in the case who put me in the frame in the Netflix production is there saying, uh, I burnt the coat. So my lawyers are looking at that at the moment with a view to the possibility of taking a legal action. Yeah, yeah. What way did they pitch these um, documentaries to Ian? And did you ever have any thoughts that you mightn't get involved in doing them? Well, the Jim Doc came about way back in 2000. Probably a lot of people can remember this. I, I took a case against the state for um wrongful arrest and the various other torts back in 2014 and at the beginning of that i was approached by well actually quite a few people but jim was one of them i was also approached by two young people from england called jennifer ford and sam bungie who then went on to make um, a very famous now podcast and i um jim approached me in the forecourts and said he was very interested in the story and he felt there was something very wrong about the way I'd been treated and we sort of formed a relationship then and um, and that was sort of more formalized as time went on and I cooperated with him and his excellent team of um, production team um, and then subsequently Netflix approached me and I explained to them that I really couldn't help them very much at all because I was in contractual agreement with with Jim and with these documentaries coming out in um, they've obviously kind of spiraled everything back into the into the public life uh, how do you deal with that on a personal level from I know there's probably positive people but obviously there's going to be some negativity surrounding it as well yeah well a lot of the negativity I just choose to ignore it um, I mean, I'm 25 years into this, and I'm pretty battle-hardened. Um, and um, I, I, what I do is I actually I, I find po poetry and writing is very cathartic in terms of dealing with the, the particular bundle of crap I've got to deal with. Mm. And um, I find metaphors very good. And one of the metaphors I've used is I'm in a John Wayne state of mind, which is a, the title book of a collection of poems I wrote. And I, I, I also I practice, and I have practiced, Theravadan detachment, Buddhist meditation, which allows me to completely detach from the, 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 you know, the day to day realities and the, the visage and that sort of stuff and I've got a very 
strong faith. Um, actually, the interesting thing about my fast against me, man, really tricked me into a list and turned out to be a um, the complete opposite. I and came out with all sorts of crap in in the Sunday Independent. I was able to. It didn't hurt me. Didn't harm me. I didn't read it. Yeah. Uh, and I was able to forgive Sister Sinead, um, you know, who I think trespassed against me. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what I was reading something online a few weeks ago that you were refused entry to a restaurant down there. Is that true? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's rather sad, really, because I knew the owner. I won't mention her name, but she's I've known her for all the yeah, time. I've been here 30 years. She's a lovely lady, and she had a lovely little cafe in Skull. And I'd been going there, <clears throat> you know, it, nice sunny days and having coffee and my gabine crispy rashers and scrambled eggs and brown toast. And I went along one morning, Monday morning, I think about oh, maybe three weeks ago. And she said, Ian, um, somebody had apparently made some sort of complaint about me um, being there. It certainly wouldn't have been a local person. It would have been one of the many, many visitors who were coming in. And she said, Ian, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want you in here. Well, it's, it's not even in here. It was on county council, you know, because, you know, this thing that's happened with COVID, all the restaurants now have moved onto the roads. Yeah. So I, I said to her, I'm, I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, and um, I was very polite, didn't react and walked away and um, went off to Ballard de Hob to Bud's to have a lovely breakfast. I know it, it was just a bit sad, and I, she could have done it another way. She shouldn't have done it in front of a whole load of people who were watching. Yeah. She could, you know, she could have sort of had it t taken me aside and said, "Ian, you know, because of the situation and this, I, I, would you mind not coming in?" And I'd have said, "Yeah, that's fine." But she chose to do it the way she did. Yeah, so it's obviously this. It's obviously someone that's watched most likely the netflix documentary or one of those i don't like, know i don't know i think the thing is this this, this thing has caused so, so much of a schism over mm -hmm. the years down here and it's divided the town very much in the early days there was the he did it camp and there was the oh no he didn't do it camp mm -hmm. and um it's you know and so many lies were told by the guards who went around the community assuring people absolutely have no doubt it's that so and so that Billy B, who who murdered her, and a lot a lot of people chose to believe that, and a lot of people chose not to. But it's it's scarred. It's left a really, really dark, sad scar on West Cork. You know, the, possibly the most beautiful place in the world, and it, it goes on to this day. Yeah. Um, I want to talk to you because I know we're we're kind of pushed for time here today. So I want to kind of ask you about. Um, we see a lot in the two documentaries about you going to the markets and down in Cork and mm. stuff. What what is it that you do at the markets, and what's the reaction well, been we, like at the we, we 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 started the the Skullmark Sunday Market there about twenty years ago. My former partner yeah. Jules was involved in instigating it, and there were markets in Bantry on a Friday and Skibbereen on a Saturday. So we started one in in Skull on a Sunday, and it's been going for twenty one years. And I've been doing it all of those years, and I, I I used to make pizza. I don't do that anymore because of I, I don't have to get up at th three or four o'clock on a Sunday morning, um, <laughs> fortunately anymore. But I, I sell I sell wood carvings, which I make um, unique sort of one-off pieces of wood carving, uh, and my poetry. I have two collections of poetry, the West Court Way and a, a John Wayne State of Mind, and I have those on the stall, and. Um, you know, I've, I've been doing those. And I used to do a market in Skibbereen, but I, I, I recently, this year, I've given that up. And I'm pleased I did because, again, I had to get up at four o'clock on a Saturday morning to get over there. Yeah. And I did that for four years and it was exhausting. Do you find a lot of people that have watched the shows recently are showing up at the markets to talk to you? Yeah, yeah, very much. I mean, apparently there's a thing called mur murder tourism. I've heard going on down here at the moment where people are flocking to West Cork to, you know, rather mawkishly to um, visit the murder scene. And uh, um, but a lot. Yeah, a lot of people come up to me at the market. I get a lot of support from a lot of people, lovely, lovely um, wonderful people. Um, and, uh, you know, recently, one of the ways I've been dealing with the <clears throat> this particular phase of the um, my life or torture or whatever you want to call it is study 
And uh, I've done it before with law. You know, I spent five years up at UCC and I buried my head in a bucket of study. And recently I buried my head in a bucket of study of Gelga. So I'm, I'm cupola fuckling and learning new words and phrases all the time. And now when I address people, initially I'll address them um, in Eschgelga as opposed to Esbela, i.e. I'll say Conestatu rather than how are you. And if yeah. they don't understand, then obviously I'll talk to them in English. But it's, um, yeah. That's what's going on. Any, any plans for the future? We well, I have to find a new place to live. I'm trying to. I'm in operation vacate and relocate at the moment, um, yeah. to do with the end of my long-term relationship with Jules, and it's very difficult because there's no place at the inn at the moment because the you know everybody knows there's been this huge, great demographic shift because of COVID. Everybody wants to be in West Cork. Mm. Also, it's the holiday season and everywhere's booked out. So I think I'm going to have to be waiting until maybe. The end of September, October. There's a place being indicated to me that would be available, okay. um, but I'm, I'm just trying to, and, and in the meantime, to sort of try to do the best I can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, Ian, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. I know you're really, really busy, and listen, I really appreciate your time today. Okay. Um, well, good of me and uh and Slan Lat. Yeah, I hope I gave you a better interview than Sinead, Anyway. Ha, 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 ha.